one of the most relevant examples, I think, in the teacher's guide was the question of what is Latin American art? Can you say that something is Latin American art just because it was made in Latin America? And the whole notion of what Latin American art is, if it even exists. This was the beginning of the school year, so this was yeah. the first idea we tackled in what's supposed to be a Latin American art history class. Well, it's a problem with any label. It seems to apparently unify things that are not yeah. to be unified. But the students work on the assignments. So in relation to the Under the Same Sun exhibition, uh, yeah. students made a lot of work in relation to the ideas that all the artists were kind of discussing, and the students come from similar backgrounds in mm -hmm. terms of nationalities, yeah. so they found a lot of the issues extremely relevant to their lives and their families' lives. Mm -hmm. One girl contacted all 50 departments of education in the U.S., mm -hmm. asking them different questions in a survey, and then made this insane kind of physical infographic wow. of who responded and how they responded. How so old are they? High school students. So most mm -hmm. of them are 15, 16, uh -huh. yeah, juniors and sophomores for the yeah. most part. Although I feel very Latin American in, in my mind, there's more interesting thing of periphery than about the geographical uh, borderline defined concept. It may not match geography anymore because with internet you have a, like a mayonnaise combination, suspension yeah. in which centers and peripheries are like little globules. It, it never made much sense. I mean <laughs> Uruguay and Brazil are separated at one point by a street. And I always had this vision of having one foot in Uruguay and one foot in Brazil, mm -hmm. and then take something out of my Uruguayan pocket and put it in the <laughs> Brazilian pocket, and then go to jail for smuggling. <laughs> so that shows how arbitrary geography is. Mm -hmm. I'd rather speak of infography, in which information is produced in some place, received in another. Yeah. And that is still center and periphery. Another issue I think that came up in the exhibition and in the teacher's guide that we talked about, what is Latin America? Well, where is Latin America? That's <laughs> Wait, a question. Yeah, where is okay. it? Latin America is as much in the Bronx as it is in Brazil or in Norway. So they each keep their personality. They're just in suspension. Mm. And that is really the model for a new geography. It's not anymore lines around a country. Mm -hmm. And we're all in the same geographical room but in terms of power relations, they're all reflected in the spot. I find it really interesting where my students identify both as one nationality and American at the mm. same time. And, you know, when they're here in America, they're regarded as this other nationality. But then when they go back to that, you know, their parents' homeland, they're regarded as American. So yeah. when they're in one place, they're the opposite. And that creation of this kind of third culture that starts to emerge where you're not one or the other, you're just both. That's Spanish, and there's a breaking point in which you are away too long and you have to reclaim and reconquer <laughs> your territory or the rights Pledge your in allegiance your again. territory, yeah. which is not easy. Yeah. And now when I go back to Uruguay, uh, everybody's happy, receives me happily, but because they know I'm leaving again. So what are some um, of the artists, I guess, in the exhibition that you put in here, right? The choice was really very impersonal, and it was more based on how fertile the work was in terms of generating assignments. Yeah. And uh, assignments had to be open-ended, not a right or wrong answer, but should be a stimulus to generate thought. I picked the ones that has many solutions to, and uh, hopefully many uh, transdisciplinary solutions so that they wouldn't be stuck with the notion of art. And then they see that an artist solved it in a given way and then they may wonder, oh, I didn't know that in art you can do this and um, therefore bring them into the territory yeah. and also share the creative process with the artist rather than consume the results of the creative process. Certainly. The logo for America, mm -hmm. the Alfredo Jar piece, was yeah. particularly resonant for that, yeah. right? Where there was no question about yeah, absolutely. using that. Yeah. Which, that was the first piece from the exhibition that we talked about, was yeah. day one of the class, before we you know, even handed out the syllabus, I said, can you draw a picture of what an American looks like? What does mm -hmm. an American look like? And you know, we passed out some crayons and stuff, and, you know, drew them up and everything. And, 
the imagery was kind of shockingly stereotypical. It was a lot yeah. of blonde hair, blue-eyed, people with Starbucks cups, uh, morbidly obese individuals, cheeseburgers, french fries, that kind of thing. A lot of American flags, and we put them all up, and you know, after kind of looking for some similarities and differences, you know, I asked the class, I was like, who here was born in America? You know, about three quarters of the class raised their hand, and I said, uh, why didn't you draw yourself? And it never occurred yeah. to that. They're like, that's a thing? We can do that? <laughs> Who does the American experience really belong to? Once you are offered that space, mm -hmm. you know that several million people will see that. Yeah. But the first dilemma was, I have one minute or 40 seconds to talk to 10 million people during so many days. So you have to like, cut down to what people might care. Mm -hmm. Within that, what argument can you make in the most cogent, impacting way, and how do you reduce it to the time? So it takes a lot of shortlisting possibilities until you hit the one you consider the right one. Mm -hmm. And he was very successful. Another artist that we talked a lot about was uh, Tanya Bergera yes. and uh, the Tatlin's Whisper piece. Which is kind of cool because some of the students got to go and visit Immigrant Movement International. Tanya talked to the students about mm -hmm. some of their projects, um, and it was an incredible experience. We studied the piece, we you know looked at a video of it and everything, mm -hmm. and then we recreated it in the classroom. And we got a podium, an orange background, a little dove that I made out of paper mache on the yeah. corner. And uh, students, this was the first week of school, were able to give this one minute speech about mm -hmm. anything they wanted, and you could see this concern about crossing boundaries and the cultural context of the students replicating the piece in our school had more to do with this kind of social censorship rather mm -hmm. than a political one. We're all of a sudden talking about things in the classroom that may be considered taboo, cursing, that kind of thing. All that's got tossed out the window. No, good. I mean, ultimately it's about power. Yeah, yes. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Who has it and how can you retake it? Yeah how we restrict ourselves or self-censor in a way and mm -hmm. to give in to that power structure, we participate in it even if we don't agree with it. Yeah. So.